This is an insect, a cricket to be exact. So, before I begin, who here is down to eat, to join me in eating insects? I'm gonna get a show of hands. One, two, oh, we got a lot of hands. Okay, this is great. For the rest of you, I see that I have some convincing to do. Now, as an entomologist, I have always loved insects. For, at the age of six, I started collecting them, and since then, have ran with this passion. As I aged, I developed and started keeping insects as pets. And all of the coolest pets are the predators. The praying mantis, for example, there wearing a leash, the spider, and the vinegaroon, my pet Vinny. So, these pets, I would feed from crickets sourced from under a rock in my front yard. These rocks were great. They were landscaping rocks, and as a child, I would always get into trouble because I would flip them over and not put them back exactly where I found them. One of them had ants under it all the time. Another one had spiders sometimes, and crickets had their favorite rock as well. For feeding these guys, it was totally handy to have a cricket rock that I could source from. Unfortunately, in the Michigan winters, this became more difficult, and I was not going to be scammed the 10 cents per cricket at PetSmart. So I decided to start breeding my own crickets. While researching how to do this, I stumbled across a 200-page UN report about why we should incorporate edible insects into our food systems. This was wonderful. I accidentally read the whole thing and emerged four hours later, ready to eat my own insect. I ran to the cricket rock, flipped it over, caught a cricket, flipped it up, and ate it. It tasted like the one I just ate for you now, a little bit like shrimp. After all, they're pretty closely related. But insects can come in a variety of shapes and flavors. This is one of my favorite insects to eat. It is a June bug grub. It has a rich, nutty flavor although it may not look the part. Mealworms are another great option. They have a text, flavor and texture somewhat similar to sunflower seeds. I love to cook them up with a little bit of rice and some vegetables and bring them to pop up. So in 2016, yeah, you're all invited to pop up after this, crickets for everybody. In 2016, I took what I had learned from this report and brought it into my own paper. I wrote a paper for an organization called the World Food Prize. There, I wrote about why we could, should practically incorporate insects into our diets. I was invited to their international conference, and well there, listened to speakers from across the world, including one that really resonated with me. She spoke about how 25,000 people die every day from hunger-related illness including some that she personally knew. Our food systems cannot support the population that we have. And speaking with her made me realize that each of those 25,000 is not just a number, but an individual with a life as complex and rich as yours and mine. Everyone wants to make a difference in this world. And I decided the difference I wanted to make would be to improve our food systems so that we were able to support all of the people on this earth and alleviate some of the immense suffering we face right now. And the way to do this? Eating insects. Now, this may seem like an odd solution, but I assure you, there are some distinct advantages to eating insects over our traditional livestock. The first advantage is land usage. Livestock right now accounts for over three-fourths of all of the agricultural land used. Despite this, only around 12% of the calories that we consume are from livestock. All of this land could be better utilized growing crops for people as wildlife sanctuaries or otherwise used. Instead, the largest portion of viable land only goes towards livestock. Insects are very different in this regard. They require no pasture, one of the largest uses of agricultural land for livestock production, and can be grown in very small areas. The summer after my freshman year in college, I worked for a company in Vienna breeding mealworms. We bred them just outside the city in a shared office space. This simply would not have been possible with cattle. 
And even though they're very small, they reproduce incredibly quickly. A single mealworm will lay around 300 eggs in her lifetime. And in only a few weeks, those eggs will have hatched, developed, and be ready to lay eggs of their own. This exponential reproduction means that an at-scale insect farm can be harvested pounds and pounds every week. Whereas traditional livestock require years to grow before they're able to be harvested. Another distinct advantage edible insects have is the amount of food and water they consume. Insects consume around 10 times less food and 100 times less water when compared to cows for the same pound of protein. It's also important to note that they eat different things. Insects can survive totally off of our scraps and byproducts. In Vienna, we fed mealworms scraps from the grocery store and market that had gone bad and were otherwise going to be discarded. This is especially important because food waste is one of the largest contributors to municipal landfills. Cattle and all livestock, on the other hand, require grain. This grain has to be grown specifically for them, costing more resources, and it prevents that grain being used to feed people. In fact, if we fed all of the grain that we feed to cattle in the United States alone, we would have enough food for around 800 million people. A final advantage that edible insects have is that of greenhouse gas production. Agriculture is one of the largest greenhouse gas producers as a sector. And the main contributors from agriculture are ruminant digesters and manure management. Insects are better on both counts. Ruminant digesters are the way cattle and sheep and some other animals digest their food, and it produce, produces lots of methane. Insects digest their food differently, producing no greenhouse gases directly, and they expel much less waste. This waste can still be used as fertilizer, but there is much less of a chance for it to contaminate the environment, both through greenhouse gases and by getting into our waterways. And this brings us to edible insects and the actually eating insects, the fun part. There are advantages here too. Edible insects are the safer and healthier bet. For starters, when you eat a cow, you don't eat the entire cow. You eat about 40% of it. The rest is skin and bone, hooves, things that are best left uneaten. But insects don't have bones. Instead, they have a rigid exoskeleton. This means that instead of eating only 40% of the cow, you're able to eat the entire insect. And the exoskeleton is packed full of things like iron, calcium, vitamin D, and other vital micronutrients. Eating insects is the healthier option. And it's the safer option. Zoonotic diseases, or diseases that jump from animals to people, happen when we're in contact with things that are like us. Mad cow disease, swine flu, and even COVID-19 all happen because we decided to eat mammals. Insects, on the other hand, are so different from us, that no bones at all, that eating them carries very little risk of diseases jumping between us and them. Eating insects is so safe, in fact, that the FDA already allows insects in the foods you and I already consume. The average American, you, consume around two pounds of pure insect material every year, hidden away in things like tomato paste and peanut butter without even noticing. And you don't necessarily need to notice if you're eating insects intentionally either. Granola bars, and chocolate chip cookies, and even pasta can be made with insect flour. Insect flour is a flour made from whole, crowned insects that is then cooked with as traditional flour. I have made chocolate chip cookies with this flour and eaten bars similar to these. The flavor and texture is almost identical but all of the environmental and nutritional benefits are retained. You can also hide insects in things like hamburgers. Insects can be everywhere. But another thing is not to hide the insect, but to emphasize it. Chefs can make beautiful and delicious dishes that emphasize insect ingredients. You can also get things like street food, that whole insects are fried and eaten similar to crisps, chips, 
or anything else, french fries even. Edible insects are coming. The industry is growing in Europe and America. Already, 80% of cultures around the world consume insects. We're behind in this regard, but we're catching up. Massive industrial farms have sprung, sprang up in Europe and are currently under construction right now here in the States. With this rapid expansion of the industry, it's not unlikely that edible insects will be coming to grocery stores here in Ithaca and around the country. When this happens, I urge you to go out and try them. Try some insects. You might be surprised at how much you enjoy them. And for all of you who raised your hands in the beginning, you can order insects right now online. You can get insects granola bars, cookies, and flour to cook with yourself from internet retailers. If you're not okay with eating insects yet, that's okay. Cultural change takes time. You'll get there. But in the meantime, we can still help incorporate insects into our food systems. Animal feed made with insects can be more sustainable than other types. On the commercial scale, this means aquaculture can use edible insects in feeding their fish. But on the personal scale, your cats and dogs might be happier eating insects than their other traditional foods. So look for an insect-based cat food or dog food. Edible insects are coming. They can help improve the sustainability of our food systems and make it so that we can feed all the people on this earth. They are a healthy and safe option. And so I ask again, are you ready to eat an insect?